One thing in Opus Modus that we haven't really talked about so far are sound sets. And sound sets is a little bit of an ambiguous name because some people use it for simply presets or sample libraries. Um, but when we in Opus Modus and, and most people working with um, orchestral libraries are talking about sound sets, we basically mean specific articulations that we can use for an instrument. So these articulations could be legato, marcato, um, sforzando, and it's, it's how the instrument is being performed. And if we take a look, for example, at uh, Vienna Instruments Pro, uh, very famous uh, orchestral libraries, I guess you could call it, uh, software system would be perhaps more correct. Uh, we can see here that we have different patches. These are different um, articulations for a certain instrument. We can see at the beginning here that to switch to a certain articulation, we can use this note, which is called a key switch. They're usually outside of the range, or they're supposed to be outside of the range of the instrument itself. And then within that, we have different sounds again. So if I play this here, and then I switch to a different one. We can hear that the sound will be either subtly or drastically different, such as tremolos. So in order to control this, normally in a MIDI editor, you would uh, put in that, that key switch at the bottom and then the one that it belongs to. So in this case, if we want to use the tremolo, and then we want to use this version of the tremolo. We send F2 and then we send D sharp 1. Um, and sometimes there's also a controller value we want to send. For this one, for example, we want to send uh, CC1, which is the mod wheel above uh, a value of 63, only to get to that articulation. That can be a little bit cumbersome to work with. So in Opus Modus, we have something called sound sets. Um, and they are basically a full list. Um, in the list, we specify the key that we send, sometimes multiple, and the CC value, if any, that we send to get towards a certain sound. Now, for the name of the articulation, we can make up anything. I would advise to stick with conventions, but sometimes you want to combine multiple of them, and we can basically give it our own name here. Um, so we can, we can uh, take a list like this, and then the only thing we have to do in our score is to say, all right, for the sound, I want to use, in this case, uh, VSL violin. It will look for that in the sound set, which is in, under the default sound set in the library. And if, it, if this name matches, it will use these and send these key switches when this articulation is being applied. So that's a very convenient way of working with the system. Now, Opus Modus already comes with lots of them, such as for Roland, Piano Tech, kind of famous. We even have native instruments in there. Um, we have some Korg, Kawai. Uh, but of course, if you have your own synth or your own um, library that you use, you can either look at the manual and, and figure out which key switches um, correspond to which sound and then set it up like this. Um, and then after that, you could expand on that. And you could do this for basic synthesizers as well. Let's say you want to sound you want an articulation that has the filter cutoff more open on a certain synth. You could create an articulation for that, and then you could send a CC value, which you then map inside that synth. So it, it works, works two ways. Um, and that's what I want to show with this core. Now, this core itself is uh, fairly involved. Um, it's, it's a great example of uh, algorithmic composition, uh, because we start with some partials. Um, this is basically a bunch of numbers. Uh, these are analyzed from an audio file of recordings of a clock, a very famous one in, um, in Venice. You might recognize it. And then we convert that into notes. And this gives us a whole list of um, notes, which we quantize to make it a little bit more normal, not use any microtones or anything like this. Um, and then we separate that into four different voices, since we're working with a string quartet here. Now, after that, we do some variations on that. Uh, then we get into our rhythms. Rhythm series is another great function to check out. I would recommend that. Um, then we do some very fancy time uh, modulations, and we use the segment to time function, uh, which is also a beautiful function. And then we throw that into our first counterpoint, where we apply a dictum, which means we apply some rules to these different voices. Then after that, um, to work with the concept of density, uh, we again create a, uh, new variations on this score, and we specify the bars in which the density can, is either lower or higher. You will, I will play this piece at the end of the video, and you will see um, 
you will see this com uh, concept applied quite clearly. You can see that some bars are very dense, they have rich clusters of notes, very um, fast and, and close together, and then other bars that are more sparse and have longer notes, and this creates a beautiful sort of call and response feeling. Um, so to control that again, we again go through a counterpoint, and then we get into our actual um, mapping. So the mapping here, like you've seen in Opus Modus notation, perhaps that you can you can do simply something like this, where you say C3, and then you say Mark, and then it applies that articulation. Uh, but since we're doing a little bit more advanced stuff right here, um, what we say is all right. If the length of the note is in between, let's say a, tri a triplet quarter note and a half note then we want to apply these articulations, which again, we can find on the, on the right side here. So using the system, we get eventually a, a piece that um, has lots of complex um, changes in the sound that are, actually, that are actually performed. They're actually, it switches to a new sample internally right here. So you get something that, that sounds incredibly natural and incredibly rich, and that is pretty much ready for for release, I would say. It becomes more than just the score. Of course, it will notate your articulations, but you can also hear it. Um, so that is the, the essence of this piece, and that's what I wanted to show you. Um, I would recommend to spend some time with this, because even if you're not working with orchestral libraries, you can do a lot with this in, in terms of sound design and synthesis as well. Um, I, I might make another video about that, because it's a very interesting concept. For now, I want to thank you for watching. I will play this score, evaluate this score, and then um, wish you a good rest of the day.